video, I'm going to show you how to put an edging on your fancy granny square. It's the same one I've been using. Um, it's a Susan Bates inline four millimeter hook. So start anywhere on the the pattern. Um, I'm going to start like right here. This is near where it was. These are slip stitches. So you could you could go up in the top part and like hit the back of the previous rows of stitches as long as you get two loops. But um yeah, I recommend actually getting the the actual slip. This is the last slip stitch and those are kind of leaning towards you. And this is the front cuz it has that extra ridge. And I'm just going to pull that through. And we're just going to make uh, single crochets so you can um, lay your tail over your yarn like that a little bit. It helps cinch it down a little. Okay. And then go back into the same stitch. And just do a single crochet. So I'm just going into those slip stitches. They're not easy. I'm doing single crochets. There is a stitch right here. That's like a connector. And you count that. So you want to count four stitches. One, two, three, four. Go ahead and make three chains. One, two, three. And then you count four. One, two, three, and then four. So that gives you a little gap where the the dip happens. Now I'll just do single crochets all the way around until you get to this dip right here. And you do the same thing. You want to Hit this stitch here, leave that one empty, and that one empty, and that one empty. You could do four stitches, or you can do three stitches. But you want to just especially leave these two at the bottom. Whatever the lowest stitches are, you want to leave those unstitched in. When you make your three chain skip. Make our three chains. One, two, three. And let's, one, two, three, let's go into this one. And there. You got your gap here, you got your gap here, and then we'll continue all the way around. I'll meet you back. Okay, so I've come all the way around. I did my last uh, three chain space. I had two more stitches, and now I'm at the first one that I did. I'm just going to do a slip stitch. Pull it up just a little bit. Cut it. Pull it through. So here is the second row. Of the edging with the the lace the second row of the um the edging and I'll show you how I do it I don't necessarily count my stitches so much as I choose where to put them because it's just how I roll so put your hook through one of the the loops on your side slip stitch chain one and do a single crochet in this stitch right next to your chain three chain three and then 
do a single crochet right in the middle between these two chains or these two three chain gaps so it's um slip stitch chain single crochet three chains single crochet three chains one two three just before your three chain gap do a single crochet chain one single crochet into the gap chain one single crochet on the other side of the gap three chains one two three and do a single crochet between your very corner and where you are so it's like right there one two three go ahead and single crochet in the middle of your corner chain three one two three between here and here you need one doesn't have to be perfect just has to look like it's in the center one two three chains single crochet before your gap chain one single crochet in the gap chain one on the other side of the gap one two three find a chain in the middle one two three three two 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 three two
The other thing that's nice about this join is you don't have to go in from the center or in through the top because it's so forgiving. You can go any way that's comfortable to you. Okay. And that's it for the side. Okay, so we've crocheted up this line here. And we're going to have two more ready to go. And we're going to, instead of just one single crochet, we're going to do three. I'm sorry. Instead of one chain, we're going to do three chains through this area. And you just keep counting uh, two three you keep counting clockwise in threes so this is one this is two this is three so then you connect to this one so remember these have two one so I did a slip stitch and I did three chains there each one of these corners has a loop on both sides. Okay, so then you count the two here, one, two, and then this one is the next one you connect to. Okay, so do three chains and then count three over. So this one's one. This one's two, this one's three, so it's this one. And then do three chains. One, two, three. Okay, it's gonna stretch it out a little bit. Okay, so if you're here, one, two, three. We're going to add this guy here. And then add three chains after you do your slip stitch. Okay, so that's one, two, three. So you did this one, so there's two here, and this is the third one. Okay, and let's just see if everything's, nope, oh, this one's not connected yet, this one right here. Let's just do three more. One. One, two, three. This guy is not connected yet. One, two, three. It's already connected in. So it's a little twisty but it has all the connections. Every one of them has had a something connect into it. So since you're here, you want to go down this one. And that means we take off two. We only need the one. One chain. And that goes in here. So 
Goblin Chain. Anyway, you get the idea. So, that's the center. Two. Doing it the wrong way. Okay. One, two, three. One, two, three. Yes. Now it has stopped all of the. Yes, because it comes back to where it starts. I was wondering why it looks so odd. And since we're here, where we started. Where's my loop? Where's my loop? I think we need to go here. I just did two. Let me do a slip stitch in one.
think I did two. Yeah, it's a little long. There we go. I know it feels like it's not a lot of space, that slip stitch in one chain, but it really is. It is a lot of space. So now if you had two more, we could do this round robin again around the, the four and then go down again. So that's how I'll, I'm going to do my corners. They look a little overdone, but yeah, it's basically skip three and go across, skip three, and go across, and do three. It looks a little bit like a snowflake in the middle to me. But each, each hole on the the corners is connected to two other holes, so this is very well, well, um, reinforced corner. But right, just do it until you come back around, and then just do two over, and then continue, and then add two more. And do the remember spirographs? That's what this reminds me of spirographs. You're hitting a point, but you're going three over and then jumping across to that third third hole. There's two on every corner. And you just go around until you come back to the one that you started in. And you could put a stitch marker. And the one that you started in, when you first started the, the, the intersection. Okay, so I'm going to show you how this works. All right, these represent the four corners of your... Of your uh, squares. So we, we ended here after we zigzagged up. So then we go one, two, three, 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 one, two, Three. One, two, three, one, two, three. So it's it hits all the corners and you end up where you started and then you do two over or you could do one or two over this way and hit the same corner so you Instead of going over this way, let me see. Okay. We finished our, our uh, intersection. It's like a clover leaf. I did one stitch.
You can just do it right here. Okay, you could do one or two depending on how stretchy this is. You could do a slip stitch like that, and then like that. That's one way to do it. And then you finish that slip stitch and then do a single crochet and go across to do slip stitch single crochet. So it's a lot of your own judgment and uh, how you want to do your connections. I mean, you could just do away with all of this lace and stuff, and instead of doing a neutral color, you know, you could do all one color squares and then do the same color in a... Um, with a tapestry needle and just sew it in like I showed you on the previous granny square where you just take the back loops of one side but that's what it's going to look like when it's done and I'll, I'll meet you back and I'll finish up all of these okay so we are back Got a, another teal and a brown, dark brown. So I've gone through this one. One, two, three. And we are going to count around these V's, one of these holes, one, two, three. So we go into this one right here. Sometimes it's hard to work around a knot. One, two, three. Let us count around. One, two, One, two, three. Let's count around. One, two. This should be the third one. Because there's one. There's two. There's three. One, two, three. Okay. One, two, chains. Count around one, two, three. Three, 
two chains. One, two, chains I've got to count around one two three I think this is where it ended. It's right here. How many times have I gone around? It feels like I'm going around and around there, doesn't it? This is where it started. This is where it ended. So we th we're going to go down this side. So we can into this line. Uh, I'm going to probably put some stitch markers in here just to hold these so they don't twist. Because we don't want them to keep going like that. There's enough going on in the middle there. 
but you don't want those to go twisting off. So yeah, I'll just stick a stitch marker through here. That's just how I'm going to store it in the meantime, in between crocheting. I hope you enjoyed this, and um, please like, share, and subscribe. Let me know how you're doing. If you have any questions or comments, um, please put them in the comments below. Um, and uh, crochet your way today, because it's the only time we have.